you mentioned you were raised in a, a Middle Eastern household. You're Persian. And uh, you mentioned that when your dad did find out what you do, he asked that you just donate all the money to charity. Um, and, and what I like is how open you you are about, uh, you know, being raised in like a good family. Like you're from privilege. It's not like you, you were like, fuck, I really need the money. And this is the easiest, quickest way to get it. You're like, no, I, I was raised with money. I had a good job. I was making money. I just, I just like enjoy this, um, which is, I think probably pisses a lot of people off because they want, people are very comfortable hearing the, oh, you were living in a trailer park. Like, oh, you were out of options. Like, yeah. oh, it was. I don't know if you went through the comments on South White Interbully, but I mean, not, some of them are really positive, but some people let's like, oh, you know, I, I, I come here for the stories of like people like drugged out that have been molested since they were like five on Skid Row. Like I'm not here for this. And I'm like, okay, it's weird that you're like here just for those, those stories. Like she has no justification for it, um, which is weird to me. And I also think that that further, like what happens is that the women that typically do this, it's true. They have no other choice a lot of the time. And people think that's because it's so horrible and degrading and your life sucks. No, my life is fucking great. But also a lot of people don't have my temperament to the sense of like, they don't care if they're stigmatized or if everyone hates them. So you could pick any job. You could pick a, I don't know, a nail tech. Imagine if people told you, oh, nail techs are horrible. They're never going to find love. Only the worst do nail techs. And then who's going to end up being nail techs? people that fit that narrative right so that's another area where I kind of deviate from it and I'm like oh I do sex work and it's great and I make my own boundaries and I do all this and it's like oh that like hurts their brain they're like wait wait, wait no, no no sex work is supposed to be something horrible and you're supposed to be so unhappy and you're supposed to be miserable and you're supposed to have no self-worth and no self-respect and you're just an object and I'm like okay if this is the life of an object like I don't tell you <laughs> yeah it's a lot of you have to be really built a certain way to, to yeah. last in, in porn and only fans like you on the internet you have, you're built a yeah. certain way to do what you do no it's not for everybody I mean, maybe you've probably had similar experiences where girls will be like oh i see the money i'm making and the life i'm living i want to do what you do and then the like one like, if you on like money media. do not become a comedian <laughs> like if you like, then, like comedy, don't do comedy. Media, or someone's mean to them they're like oh my god i can't believe someone said that it like ruins their whole day i'm like yeah no this is not for you you know what i mean like, you it, can't be somebody that's hyper focused on what other people think about you because honestly no matter what you do on the internet but especially this you're gonna get a ton of hate how did your dad find out uh, I told my mom and then she told my dad. So I have this weird thing. I can't keep secrets because I don't want my day to be disrupted by a secret coming out like ever. Like I want to like control when secrets come out. So I told my mom um, kind of, I didn't have the strength to tell my dad. Cause me and my dad are really close. Like he's like my best friend, like super daddy's girl. And I knew he'd be really fucking pissed. So she told him and I did it like around the time I was taking the bar and I knew that my dad kind of knew before I was taking it, but he didn't want to say anything because he didn't want to like fuck me up before the exam. So I remember like after I took the exam and I knew I had passed and I sat in my room and I was like crying. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, the next conversation I have is going to be about this. And I, my dad's like, oh, how'd you do? He texted me. I was like, oh, I think I did well. And he called me and he's like, okay, rest, get some sleep. And I'm going to call you tomorrow. And he never says anything like that. I was like, okay. Here we go. And I, <laughs> he never tells yeah. you to rest and get sleep. Yeah, he's like, rest up because obviously I just taken a really difficult exam. He's like, rest, get something to eat, and I'll call you tomorrow. And I was like, can you just tell me now? Like, I was <laughs> mortified. Wow. Um, and that conversation, like, I could tell that my mom had talked to him, and he had like, it was like so scripted that I was like, okay, this is not. And he was like, listen, I know what you do just all the same stuff he's like, I don't know why you're doing this he's like I think somebody has you've obviously got into the wrong crowd and they have influenced you which is crazy because <laughs> like he's like you're in the after, wrong crowd and like an after school special like you're 16 still yeah he's like I don't know who told you like the to do drugs like basically this is what he was trying to tell me he's like but this isn't for people like you these are for the same stuff like you know you hear all the time what and kind of people he say it was for he thinks it's for desperate poor women. That's like literally the narrative. Like, I and mean, a lot of people not, think that. 
yeah not not for poor people it's how a lot yeah, i mean like i've heard a lot of stories like i helped my parents pay off their mortgage with only fans this is the only way i could have yeah. afforded a house or a car so exactly but he's like this isn't for someone of your stature like you're a lawyer you come from a good family you have parents like the girls that do this don't have parents like that's literally the stuff he was saying i was just like the phone was on speaker and i was like sitting there like, <laughs> as he was going through this um so clearly this is a mistake you're making because someone influenced you because who nobody in their right mind from your background with your potential would do it. So I, I'm not mad at you because you're brainwashed, but oh. you need to, yeah, like literally you need to stop um, and donate the money to charity and then everything's fine. And like, because wow. I was so not just financially, but also like emotionally dependent on my parents, like. I mean, I would fight back a lot and stuff. Like, I'm not somebody who, like, like I like to debate, as we know. But, like, I typically would listen to them. Like, I had gone through my whole life listening to them. And, like, everything in my body, like, I had listened to this whole thing. I was quiet. And I was just like, no. <laughs> and it was, like, a shock to, like, my dad. Because I was just like, no. Um, and even when I said that, like, it all came through. And I was like wow, you're really going to do this. But I was like, the the second I thought of maybe listening to him, I was like, no, I knew that wasn't right for me. I was like, this is what I've always wanted. I've wanted an escape from this life. I just didn't think it was possible for me. I thought it's going to be miserable forever in this life. And if I listen to my parents, like, like I have my whole life, then I'm going to be literally cementing that reality. I was like, I have to try this like i have to just do it i have to listen to myself um so i was just like no and he's like okay well then he, like you know you because i had he had bought me a house and stuff too he's like okay well you know like they were trying different and like i know that they were just tr like he's like basically like okay we're not going to talk to you then you need to leave this house blah 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 but then like two weeks later they would like, you know, my parents and I are super close. Gonna, so he was going to kick you out of the house he bought for you. No, he, he wasn't and he, I was on it anyway, so he couldn't, but like he was trying that. And then when I was like, oh, I don't care. Cause I have money now. Cause I was like, cause I was a student and I was like living off them anyway. He's like, oh, okay. Well then you can stay. But, uh, like they were just trying anything to like, you know, try to get me, you know, they tried the silent treatment when that didn't work. Like they were really like, what can we do here? And they realized like, she's an adult. She just like, we don't have the power. And even the financial power we had, we don't have it anymore. So, uh, took like a few months and you know and then this was before I had still gotten my law job so I had taken the bar but I hadn't gotten my other job yet so when I got that job they both texted me they're like oh thank god you're gonna put this nonsense business aside now and like do what and they always one of the guys if you can actually help people with the state plan. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> now you can do something yeah. that's good for you good for the community and good for humanity you can put that nonsense aside now we can all pretend this didn't happen and then when I was like saying no to that then they're like okay whatever so now everything's fine like now um I wouldn't say they're like supportive of like only fans but you know they're very much like oh like are you saving money like they're going a different route with their lectures now <laughs> did you see them for Christmas yeah, I didn't see them for Christmas. We were all in Cancun. Um, that last episode of whatever I was on, I literally left Cancun to go do that and then went all the way back. So wow, because yeah, just scheduling wise, we it was like the four of us trying to figure it out with Brian. Like it became a thing. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm leaving in the middle of my trip and coming back. I so they were really all there for. The I never really had. I did not have strict parents at all. But I it it does seem like such a a stereotype of like asian or indian parents it's like they're yeah. very very even like like jewish parents i've heard very very strict right you can only be a doctor or a lawyer or something and your whole life your whole like childhood and young adult life you follow by their rules you kind of are a plusing everything it sounded like you were a good student my god you're able yeah. to like actually be a lawyer so i can understand the the temptation and the allure and like that maybe that little kid part of you were like yeah it feels really good to like go against you guys and do whatever the fuck I want and still be able to afford the, yeah. the life I want to live. Them. 
and I'm not like a huge fan of him, but I watched a Gary V video that same night. And he said something where he was like, it was like an Asian kid who was saying like, oh, I don't want to do this, but my parents want me to do it. And he said, if you, if you never take another penny from your parents, I can't explain to you how happy you will feel. And I can Ooh. honestly say that's so true. And I get, I'm very privileged. I was, at this point, I was making like over 50 grand a month. Like I'm not saying like I was like, you know, in the, <laughs> but, but my point is that like it, it's so true because the way these families, one is like, you're very close to your family. You're an extension of your family. These are sociocentric communities where it's like, it's not like here in America where it's like, oh, you're a person. And then like you have your, it's like, oh, somebody else, your, what you do affects my reputation, affects your sister's reputation, affects the family's reputation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're so like supportive of you in like so many ways of like, you know, when other kids turned 18, their parents are like, okay, bye. And like your parents are still like, oh, let me buy you a car. Let me do this. Wow. Let me support you. My oh dad, my when I was in school, he like took everything for me. I didn't touch anything, moved my car, uh, took like everything. Like, wow. Okay. Everything. Still, like, and he comes, he takes my it's car. Too to easy for you, me. kind of, you know? Yeah. So you become super dependent on them. Um, and almost like, not once, sometimes it can be unhealthy. In certain ways, it can be unhealthy because you're like, I need my parents to navigate this world for me. And this was when I was like 25, 26. And wow. I was like, I need them. I, I won't know how to survive. I don't know how to do this and that by myself. Like th my dad has to do it for me or they have to pay for it or something. And so I would say OnlyFans has been such a confidence boost for me because it was the first time I said, no, fuck that. And I started learning how to do things for myself because, you know, at the time, especially when I wasn't talking to my parents, oh, I can't just call my dad when something's wrong with my car. Oh, I need to figure out how to like do this and that. And that is that gave me so much confidence because I was really insecure about that before. I was like, everyone knows how to like live life except me. So yeah. For how long were you not talking to your parents? Was this right after they found out? Yeah, probably July of 2021 to like a oh, while. Wow. Cause I remember on my birthday, which is in January, my parents like sent me a text, but it wasn't, it was probably like a good eight, nine months that, you know, and then I, my mom started talking to me first. And then my dad started warming up, but I still was talking to my sister and my sister was very much like, oh, they ask about you every day there. And they were also super like worried. Like they thought that like my parents are still like one culturally and age wise. Like they think like someone who has a tattoo does like crystal meth and there's no one that has a tattoo. <laughs> like, they like are like she's doing only fans like what else is she doing cocaine like they really thought that like i was on this like, horrible path so they were constantly asking myself, like what is jasmine doing what is she like is she okay is she like on the street and it's like dude, no like i'm still the same person i just do only fans now it, that just couldn't compute with them because they have like this prototype of the type of person that does only fans and so when i started doing that and they don't even really know. The only reason my mom knew what OnlyFans was is because I told her about it the year before that one of my friends was doing it. And she still calls it my fan. She's like, are you my fan? Um, are you and a lot of people's fan, mom? Yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> cute. Uh, Who has a stronger personality, your mom or your dad? My mom. Like, mm -hmm. my mom has a more combative personality. Uh, my dad is, like, funny and, like, more chill. Um, but I was much more worried about my relationship with him because not that I'm not close with my mom, but we're like closer. And also my mom, I'm not afraid to piss off my mom um, because like she will like go at it with me. My dad will just get sad and I don't want to make my dad sad. Oh, yeah. I was so, afraid to piss off my dad growing up, but I was actually fucking scared of him as a kid. So I was like, I'm going to get beat. <laughs> um, but then as an adult, also scared of him because I just like. Uh, it also, made with like sex a, work, such an like to yelling. yeah, with sex work, it's a little more awkward with your dad than with your mom. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm not afraid totally. to, like, now I try to trigger my mom. Like, she's like, Your boobs are way too big. I'm like, Yeah, I make a lot of money off them. And like, I'll just like get a reduction. Yeah, I mean, like, what if <laughs> what do they want? So, like, it's but I'm not gonna like do that. Parents, it's almost like if your parents weren't so strict, like, you possibly wouldn't be where you are today. It, yeah, maybe to a 
degree. And my parents were strict compared to like Western parents. They were probably like average or below compared to Middle Eastern parents. But yeah, it could very well have been the case that if they like let me be more free, then maybe I would have found something else other than law and OnlyFans that I would have been doing. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. Like it's a pretty fucking amazing job. Yeah, I I definitely see the allure of like um not even like God, just being able to make this well, I've never I've never felt like I've made enough money, but I um I can't, I can probably imagine how awesome that feels. But again, it's like everything's yeah, a trade that's, off. A, that's a really good part of it. Um, but also just the freedom, the being able to travel, um, making your own schedule being able to define, like choose what kind of content you want to put out there, having a lot of autonomy and choice in anyone's job. I mean, this is also what the data bears out. Like the more flexibility, autonomy, choice you have in your job and the day-to-day -day parts of it, the more you like your job. So yeah. in that respect, like having no one to answer to, um, not having to request days off or, you know, um, like being in complete control of that to me. And it also, for me, it made me, cause in all my other areas of life up, up until this point, I was just meeting deadlines, doing the exams, et cetera. Um, but now it's like, oh, the more I put in this, the more I get out of it. Like it's the first time that that was really like true for me. So because of that, I'm more motivated than I've ever been before. Like I'm still a procrastinator and stuff, but like for school, it was like, oh, okay. Like law school, the way it works is all your grade is based on a four hour exam at the end of the term, pretty much. And so I would do nothing. I didn't give a fuck. I was like two weeks before the exam. I'd be like, okay, let me figure this out. Right. Um, but I didn't have like a day to day drive, um, the way I do now, because now I'm like, okay, I want to be successful at this. I never wanted to be successful at being a lawyer. I just knew I could be. Um, yeah. but I never, so you're like the type of student who is like so good. You could just like wait and cram the night before and like still get it and, and then perform well. I'm good at test taking and a lot of academic success is based on your ability to take tests. So because of that, like especially essay exams, I can sit there for a long time. I work really well under pressure. So exams were like, like people are like, how could you put aside all of the like hard work of being a lawyer? I'm not saying parts of it weren't hard, but like it just wasn't that hard for me. Like it really like school and learning, um, comes easy to me, but like working, like you have to meet your six and a half billable hours a day. I can't in those environments. Um, I, my brain just doesn't, my brain isn't set up in a way to be productive every day. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's just not, um, mentally stimulating enough for you. It's too routine. What's you your know, birthday? I used oh, January. So you're a Capricorn? Yeah. I used to literally, um, because so many other lawyers were working remote. And so the way lawyers work is you bill your time in six minute increments. Mm -hmm. And I would sign like stuff on behalf of other lawyers. And that would count as 0.1. <laughs> so I would have one of the other paralegals like give me a pile. And I would, each one would be 0.1, 0.1. And I would try to get at least like a couple hours of billable hours a day. I was like, okay, I need to leave. I don't even, I'm literally losing money by being here, which I was at the time. Um, not in the sense of like, but like my only fans, like it was growing, growing, growing. And then once I was at my job for like, it like was stagnant. And then once I left, it went up again because you can focus on it. You can think about like, oh, you know, like if I was still working there, I couldn't go on these podcasts. Like I couldn't do anything mm -hmm. like that.